Hello everybody and welcome back to Fly Out. Today we're going to be building a push configuration fighter. So uh, there's a couple of examples of this that were made in real life. Uh, most notably, probably the J-21, uh, the, uh, the Saab J-21 I think it was. Uh, a Swedish design, the engine and the gearbox and the propeller are all in the back of the aircraft. Now this comes with a couple of advantages. Most notably, you can have a lot of guns in your nose cone because there's not an engine there anymore and that was typically something that people had to make do with putting the gun through the middle of a crankshaft or just not having guns in the nose at all but obviously having guns in the nose you're more accurate because you've got guns on your wings either you've got a dead zone in the middle or you have those guns converge something like 400 500 meters in front of your aircraft and then if you're more than that distance away the guns are no longer even close to aiming at what you're shooting at so guns in the nose are a good thing uh <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna have plenty of room for plenty of guns with this design. Now, obvious downsides are, uh, well, you can't have a tail uh, there. There's a propeller, so you've got to split it into two. So that's extra weight for one, uh, and also some issues with aerodynamics. I'm not entirely sure on the whole thing, but regardless, it wasn't done very often because it wasn't great. Uh, it worked, but it wasn't brilliant and to be fair that could just be lack of development uh, <laughs> lack of creativity on their behalf but i i imagine there are a few more problems than what i've just listed there but uh, regardless that doesn't mean we can't have a go today so uh this is obviously going to be heavily inspired by the j21 uh it's got roots in it and uh i i think yeah, I need to I need to work on the designs of the uh, cockpits. They always look a little bit too uh, how do you, how do you say modern? <laughs> it feels a little bit too like 1950s rather than 1940s, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of it's it's weird. <laughs> but uh, regardless, we've got our big engine in the back here. It's a V12 uh, liquid-cooled engine, or actually a V8 at the moment, but uh, it was meant to be a V12. I just forgot to actually change the number of cylinders we had. Uh, and then we've got this big four-blade propeller, and uh, obviously due to the fact that the propeller is right there, we can't have the usual landing gear arrangement of two on the wings and one on the tail. Uh, we've got to do the... I think it's called the tripod landing gear arrangement, which is kind of what the like P63 used, and for that matter, the J21 uh, in real life. And uh, that will just ensure that the propeller stays well clear of the ground, even on takeoff. Uh, that's not normally a problem with most fighters, because obviously, propeller goes at the front, plane tilts up, and then it lifts it off the ground. Uh, no problem there at all, but uh, yeah, something we need to consider here, which, uh, I mean, doesn't really have any drawbacks, at least in this game, maybe in real life, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty much done with the general shaping of it here. We do a little bit of uh, fiddling to uh, refine it as we go along, but uh, I will leave that up to future me. Okay, so here's what we have so far. There's a few things about this that look a little bit off, but I don't really know which bits anymore. Uh, and I think it's about high time that we get this thing into the air. So we're going to go into our power units. We're going to get a piston engine, and we're going to tweak this until we have probably about uh, 1,200 horsepower. We're going to aim for roughly. Okay, so we have a liquid cool. V engine here. So this thing puts out about 1400 horsepower. It's a little bit over what we aimed for, but that's not to be sniffed at too much here. So I'm going to plug it in and we're going to see if we can work out uh, a good level of, well, a good, a good, some good settings with which to have this propeller. Yeah, we're going to make it fly. Okay, so now we got an engine in here. It's about 1,300 horsepower, which is a little bit more than we went for. But you know what? That's that's a good that's the good way round for it to be. More power is better than less power. So <laughs> uh, let's just set up this gearbox and the propeller, and we'll see if we can get this thing to fly. Okay, here we are on the runway, and I doubt this is going to be a particularly efficient engine. And uh, I mean, already it doesn't look like we're even coming close to reaching that target RPM. Oh, never mind. Hang on. It's going. It's going. And that looks to me very much like we're wasting a lot of uh, 
RPM here. If I lower this target RPM, we might get a little bit more luck here. Though we've got to go down quite a way. Uh, <laughs> could be here a while. Okie dokie. So we're hoping for an actual takeoff this time. Uh, we have very, very high revving propeller. Uh, so that could be interesting to see how it does. And uh, look, okay, the propeller tip is uh, providing negative lift. So that is not going to help in the slightest. Uh, maybe it's time to look at dropping the uh, RPM a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's not ideal. Okay, it's a little bit later. I've watched the F1. Uh, we've made a couple of changes. There's a couple of visual things. So for instance, the nose is now shorter. It looked uh, just disproportionate last time. Uh, we have a engine that's a bit bigger last time. I forgot. Uh, I, I put a V12 worth of exhausts, but it was only a V8. Uh, so now it's it's a V12. Um, also produces a stupid amount of power, but you know what? That's fine by me. It's <laughs> it's good fun to go a stupid amount of speed. Uh, and we have some really aggressive prop pitch. Honestly, I, uh, that's probably not optimal, but oh well. I, 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 don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not an aeronautical engineer. Let's fly it. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, there's a lot of torque on this propeller. Uh, obviously, we only have the one, um, so we do have to counteract for that while we take off. However, no problem getting up to take off speed. It's about 200 kilometers an hour to lift off the ground, but there you go. Uh, we are airborne and uh, moving at a reasonable rate of knots. Now, we don't have any armament on this thing yet, but that's something that is a very big advantage of having this configuration of the propeller in the back of the aircraft along with the engine and the gearbox. You have nothing in your nose anymore, so obviously that configuration in real life is used on jet aircraft to fit a radar, but because this is meant to be 1940s tech, radar not really small enough to fit inside a fighter aircraft just yet. we got to wait another couple of years for that one. So what we're going to be doing instead is filling that space with big guns. <laughs> so we technically have a limit of 32 millimeter uh, on our cannons. Uh, there is file editing to get that up. So I might see if I can just get ourselves a 37 millimeter cannon right here in the nose because I reckon that could be quite fun. <laughs> Okay, so cannons added. We have a 37mm here in the very nose, and then up and to the side of it we've got two 20mm cannons. So we have, uh, I think it's 100 rounds in the 37mm, yeah, well, so yeah, the files still say 37, so I, I, I think it's worked, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of hard to know. Regardless, we have 520 millimeters per gun, so that's a thousand in total, which is more than enough ammunition, uh, and we'll just give this thing a little bit of a paint job. <laughs> so I think underside, we're going to go for like a light blue kind of color, so I kind of want to match the sky here. There we go, now we've got a nice blue underside to this green aircraft and ah, the, hang on the backs <laughs> the backs lost its blue okay then so now that that is done let's just adjust this green just a little bit there we go big old swedish roundel we'll just plonk it on the nose because obviously this has taken inspiration from the swedish design okay here we go for hopefully the last time we're taking off uh, the cannons are equipped, <laughs> and uh, oh god, yeah, they they are scary in terms of firepower. This thing would absolutely tear a bomber to shreds, and that's probably what this would be used for, is interception rather than being a fighter. Just doesn't feel like a l particularly light aircraft. Um, you might be able to pull it off, and I mean, in flyout at least, it's seemingly quite agile, but uh, not agile enough to be like a Spitfire competitor here. Um, shall we shoot some buildings and hope that these guns look cool? <laughs> yes! I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, that was a little bit close to the ground. You don't want to get caught up in those guns, though. Uh, so, 
I mean, I reckon it's about time that we try and bring this thing in for a landing and uh, wrap it up. Okay, we cut the throttle, got to get our line in for our approach, and then, just give her a little bit of beans, we don't want to stall. If we pop the flaps out to mode 3 here, extend the landing gear, and I've remembered the brakes, everybody, I have remembered the brakes. I know, I don't do it very often, but uh, sometimes my genius is astounding, and if we just... Bring her down, nice and gentle. Okay, not the most gentle, but pop the brakes on. Oh god, they're a bit. Oh, they're a bit vigorous. Uh, maybe, maybe I've done too good <laughs> brakes today. But there we go. We have landed. All is well in the world. We will turn the engine off and then our landing gear will do some glitchy stuff and we'll fall through the floor. So let me just actually turn that back on so it doesn't do that. Uh, if you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe on this video. If you'd like to see some more stuff involving this game, Sprocket, Trailmakers, whatever, just let me know in the comments down below. If you've got any ideas, feel free to share them either in the comment section or in my Discord, which will be linked in the description. And with all of that said, I have some plans for this thing in the future, so stick around nearby if you want to see that, and I will see you in the future. Goodbye! And as always, a huge thank you to this channel's patrons, Badger, Burn and Potato, CamJam125, Cody N, DG Pete, Gavoon, Gummaster99, Sad Cat, Just Casual T621, Last Legend 11, Mark, Mildly Invested, Nicholas K, Rolls Brocken, Ryan Brody, The Canadian Emperor, Zerashime, and Zy Wolverine. Thank you very much for your support.